food that we consume is enzymatically broken down in stomach and glucose molecules are released into the bloodstream. Insulin is produced by the pancreas after every meal and is mixed with the glucose. This binds to insulin transporters that enable the glucose molecules to get into cells. Type 1 diabetes is a case where no insulin is produced by the pancreas and glucose molecules do not enter the cells and remain in the bloodstream. Type 2 diabetes is a condition in which cell receptors fail to function leading to elevated levels of glucose in the bloodstream and a higher amount of insulin is required for binding. In both these cases, there is an increase in glucose level in blood which leads to with diabetes must pay close attention to their dietary intake including portion sizes, meal frequency and carbohydrates. The carbohydrates in food are the body's primary source of glucose. Carbohydrates convert into glucose in the blood which is used as a fuel by all cells in the body. In the liver and muscles, most of the glucose is changed into glycogen by the process of glycogenesis. Glycogen is stored in the liver and muscles until needed at some later time when glucose levels are low. If blood glucose levels are low, then epinephrine and glucagon hormones are secreted to stimulate the conversion of glycogen to glucose. This process is called catabolism. If glucose is needed immediately upon entering the cells to supply energy, it begins the metabolic process called glycolysis. The end products of glycolysis are pyruvic acid and ATP. Since glycolysis releases relatively little ATP, further reactions continue to convert pyruvic acid to acetyl-CoA and then citric acid in the citric acid cycle. The majority of the ATP is made from oxidations in the citric acid cycle in connection with the electron transport chain. During muscular activity, pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid rather than acetyl-CoA. During resting period, the lactic acid is converted back to pyruvic acid. The pyruvic acid in turn is converted back to glucose by the process called anabolism. If the glucose is not needed at that moment, it is converted into glycogen by glycogenesis. Not all carbohydrate foods are created equal. In fact, they behave quite differently in our bodies. The glycemic index describes this difference by ranking carbohydrates on a scale of 0 to 100 according to their effect on our blood glucose levels. Low GI diets have been shown to improve both glucose and lipid levels in people with diabetes. Low GI diets also reduce insulin levels and insulin resistance. Anti-diabetic rice is a black-colored, medium-grain, glutinous heirloom rice which turns purple on cooking. Its dark purple color is due to its high anthocyanin content. It is low in sugar and the grain is packed with healthy fiber, iron and plant compounds that combat heart disease and cancer. GC works on the principle that a mixture will separate into individual substances when heated. Sample introduced into GC inlet is vaporized at 250 degrees Celsius, swept onto the column by helium gas and separated on the column. Sample components emerge from the column which flow into the capillary column interface connecting the GC column and the MS. The computer drives the MS records the data and converts the electrical impulses into visual displays and hard copy displays. Identification of a compound 
based on its mass spectrum relies on the fact that every compound has a unique fragmentation pattern. A large library of known mass spectra is stored in the computer and may be searched using computer algorithms to assist the analyst in identifying the unknown. Acerone has been shown to inhibit a liver enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase, lowering blood cholesterol levels and increasing bile flow. HMG-CoA reductase is the rate-limiting enzyme in the mevalonate pathway by which cholesterol is ultimately produced. So, when HMG-CoA reductase enzyme is inhibited, it lowers LDL cholesterol levels Antioxidants and phytochemical compounds found in coffee had significant effect on insulin sensitivity or insulin secretion. Caffeine has beneficial effects on bladder dysfunction in the early stages of diabetes by increasing CAMP content in the lower urinary tract, recovering micturition reflex and improving contractility. Thus, caffeine intake is inversely associated with the risk of type 2 diabetes.